So this is the introduction, my friends, to the Quality Council of India. And please uh, trust me, many of you do not have the complete picture before you. What exactly is Quality Council? What exactly is National Accreditation Board for Hospitals and Healthcare Providers? And I'm sure this will help clear certain doubt. So in 1997, exactly 25 years uh, ago, uh, on 21st of January to be precise, uh, there was a decision by the government of India to enter into a public people partnership. So worldwide accreditation bodies are not regulatory bodies. So they are non-governmental organizations. So under a cabinet note, this organization was found in association with three main industry bodies called FIKI, ASOCHAM and CII. They came together uh, with Government of India to form this non-governmental organization called Quality Council of India with the mandate to provide accreditation framework in the country across disciplines. Not only healthcare, but across all disciplines, uh, spread quality movement in India, provide right and unbiased information on quality and related standards. It also had the mandate to represent interest in international fora. So it is the official body of India regarding the accreditation. So this is the vision of Quality Council of India, which is very broad, very precise, creating an ecosystem for quality. So it's a fantastic vision. And the mission is that to need nationwide quality movement in India by involving all stakeholders. So Kaho is an important stakeholder. For example, there are many, but I'm very proud and thankful to Dr. Lalu, Dr. Vijay, and the entire team of KahoCon 22 for giving us this opportunity once again. And the emphasis was to create, draft, and implement standards in all, all spheres of activity, whether it is industry, manufacturing, uh, education and training, everything. So, so that was the broad vision. So to, to accomplish that mission, uh, Quality Council of India set up boards. So it is a not-for-profit body registered under the Registration Act, which is simple. So it's a Section 8 company, but formed under a cabinet note. So the government endorses it uh, of 1996, led to the formation. It drafts its own rules and regulations. So it is neither a government entity nor completely a public people partnership. And to establish that mandate, it formed boards, not one board, but five boards, four accreditation boards and one quality promotion board. So there are lots of divisions. So as we see that Quality Council of India, this is the organigram. There's a governing council. There's a governing body with representation from all walks of life, all important ministries and all important stakeholders. There's a secretariat and under that secretariat lie the board and NABH is one such board under Quality Council of India, which is autonomous. This is the leadership. The current chairman of Quality Council of India is uh, Adil Zenul Bhai. Uh, he's an accomplished man, um, very important current chairman of Capacity Building Commission also. And he has uh, superseded illustrious people. The first chairman of Quality Council of India was, any, any guesses, was Ratan Tata. So, so it's a, the chairman of Quality Council of India is always appointed by the Honorable Prime Minister himself or herself. So first chairman was Ratan Tata, followed by Venu Srinivasan ji. Then Amitabh, so, so many, like Amitabh Kant also became, and now Adil Zenul Bhai, uh, he is chairman of Capacity Building Commission also. And similarly, the Secretary General of uh, Quality Council of India, we all know Dr. Girdar Gyani, so he was uh, the third chairman, and fourth is Dr. Uh, Ravi Prakash Singh, who, who was an educationist of repute. So then there are chairmen of the board, and day before yesterday only, NABH got a new chairman, Dr. Mahesh Verma. So this is just to set pictures in perspective. So what is the need for accreditation? Well, there's always a need for accreditation, and my prior uh, speakers in the earlier sessions today, including the Honorable Governor himself, highlighted the importance of accreditation. So accreditation is an external peer review process 
which gives lots of uh, validity to our processes and policies. So it uses consensus standards which are published, it involves healthcare professions and which is proactive and focuses on systems and not individuals. So all of us are very familiar with the, with the nuances of accreditation because all of us in one way or other participate with the NABH processes, mostly. So these are some of the governmental bodies where Quality Council of India and NABH works very actively. This is just to highlight that we, we work beyond accreditation. We work with so many schemes. Uh, Kaya Kalp is one. Then, uh, I mean, there are so many projects at district level, ground level, where we get involved and deliver. For example, last year we did a validation of key performance indicators for 631 districts across India in seven months, all based on our so-called, our uh, strong assessors, who are the foot soldiers, who are the brand ambassadors, who go out and do these things. So beyond the accreditation or certification or empanelment, there's lots of work today being done across spectrum by NABH, by QCI and its associate boards also. These are certain Quality Council of India voluntary certification schemes, just as an example, to give you an idea of the spectrum of activity which QCI undertakes. And for example, we own the Ayush mark, we, we own the geotagging mark. For example, many would know that the Rasugulla is geotagged uh, to, uh, to West Bengal so, and to India. For example, the Basmati geotagging. So all those things are undertaken by Quality Council of India. The drone policy, the entire drone policy of India is certified by Quality Council of India. The entire coal quality project, the entire fishery project, pan across India, the quality of fish which is exported or seafood which is exported is undertaken by Quality Council of India. So similarly, there are tens of hundreds of such projects where Quality Council of India and its boards, including NABH, are involved. So that is to give an idea. We have the international recognition, of course, Castan Angel was here. Uh, so ISQA is our, our related thing. Our sister board, NABL, uh, undertakes the ILAC, the APAC. So all these are important international certifications. Uh, it's stuck. Okay, so let me quickly now take you through the journey of NABH. Well, prior to 2005, quality in healthcare existing only in test books, right? So there was no semblance or official uh, idea about quality in healthcare. Then what happened, I mean, driving factor was quality was legal. People were afraid and then they followed certain quality. Mortality, morbidity, few indicators were there, right? Not much focus on doc documentation was there. Clinical audits were very few and far between. Every healthcare professional thought they knew CPR, but uh, I mean, they only thought that. There was not much focus on HAIs. Patient rights were domains of human rights activists. So not much idea. Then what happened in 2005? What changed in 2005 was that one of our partner hospitals, Apollo Indraprastha in New Delhi, got accredited by Joint Commission International. So Joint Commission International is an accreditation body, 70 years old, uh, founded in 1951. They have a big presence in USA. They earlier were known as JCHO, now they are only known as Joint Commission. Outside of the US, they are known as JCI. So when in 2005, Apollo Hospital uh, got themselves accredited. There was a huge hue and cry in the press and there were lots of debates happening which said, what a colossal waste of national resources. Why do we need a foreign body to tell us how to govern ourselves? So few like-minded people got together. So QCI in its seventh annual meeting on 11th of April 2005 got together and some founding fathers, many of those are in attendance today, Air Marshal Pavan Kapoor sir, there, there are many who got together to form a body. They did a process first. They, they did a global perspective about healthcare accreditation. We had uh, Mr. Michael Golding, uh, he, he was here today. And uh, uh, for example, ACHS, 
Australian Council for Healthcare Standards, 47-year-old body with a huge presence in Australia with a mandate to accredit uh, public as well as private, 83% private, 63% public facilities in Australia. So they all were studied, all standards were studied and JCI was studied, South African standards were studied, and these founding fathers decided to draft standards in 2005. And in 2005, they drafted the standard, started drafting in 2006, our first edition of NABH standards came about. So NABH, what, which started as a constituent board of QCI, we are under Ministry of Department for Promotion of Industry and Internal Trade, which is under Department uh, Ministry of Commerce. So Honorable Piyush Goelji is our minister. And uh, so NABH was set uh, with the same path. So these were the driving factors for accreditation in India, which led to the growth of NABH in India after the formation of first standard. Consumer Protection Act was thrown at all the doctors and the hospitals. Clinical establishment is still being thrown. Insurance Company Regulation Act is still being reformed. IRDA came into being. Empanelment became a major issue. And community awareness and response was slow but still catching on. So patients in certain pockets started demanding uh, some sort of uh, quality and accreditation. And a very small play, uh, role was played in certain states for medical value travel also. So these are the strengths of accreditation, which I'll not go into detail because all of us have a conviction. And it was repeated ad nauseum that accreditation is better, which rightfully it is so. Accreditation is definitely a good thing to happen to India. So these are the changes and the impact. 2005, NABH was born. 2006, our founding fathers gave us the first set of hospital accreditation standards. And they also gave us the vision of and the mission and the values of NABH. So vision of NABH was to be the apex national healthcare accreditation and quality improvement body. We are rightfully so. Mission is to have accreditation and allied programs with all stakeholders like Kaho, like many others and focusing on patient safety and quality of healthcare. These are the values we decide to give ourselves, credibility, responsiveness, transparency, innovation. So all of this we are working on, but these are the guiding lights for all of us. Uh, these are the core activities of NABH. Accreditation of healthcare facilities, quality promotion, recognition, uh, such as impanelments, IEC information, education, and uh, trainings and lots of trainings. So we undertake trainings under Quality Connect initiative, free webinars and also paid certificate courses and thousands of people have received these good one day or three day courses and, and being enriched from them. NABH contributes to promote safe, dependable, high quality healthcare. So we have this mark of excellence concept and we truly uh, abide by that, we are truly committed to that. Uh, we received uh, uh, much earlier, uh, since April 2008, the ISQA accreditation for standards, and we continue to improve on our standards every cycle. So we currently have our fifth hospital accreditation standards. So it is our most ambitious project to date. Our technical committee led by some of the leaders has done a wonderful job. And, and these standards have a uniform approach of tens chapters, 100 standards, and 651 objective elements, which make it say a very thorough, objective, and very clear cut, removes arbitrariness. So it's a four year uh, cycle with a scoring criteria. It's a very popular standard. We have also been very fortunate to receive the organizational accreditation, which is a big thing. And we just finished with the third cycle of NABH organizational assessment. And that itself is a very thorough process. We open all our policies, books, everything to ISCO examiners. They stay with us for a week and minutely check each and everything for to grant uh, a certificate of accreditation for the organization, which is NABH.
So these are the core activities. We started with one program. Today we are very proud to tell you that we are carrying out 21 programs under the three broad headings of accreditation, certification, and impanelment. We have about 10,000 plus accreditation and certifications and more than 3,800 uh, impanelments. So totally we touch uh, in a positive way about 13,500 hospitals here or there. And this is the general impact. Uh, since NABH happened, the healthcare professionals started noticing the small but significant changes in healthcare delivery. The healthcare organizations started coming forward. Government started to give incentive, which is a very significant 10%, 15%. Now there's a plan to give even 30% to, uh, we are drafting an excellence model, which will be in public domain very soon. Uh, these are the general impacts to, there was an increased awareness uh, on patient safety, quality in healthcare. Uh, I'll just take a little with your permission, sir. Uh, greater number of professionals and organizations subscribe to quality and patient safety. Third party payments got streamlined because of the NABH interventions. The specific impact, the uh, reporting of adverse events, as uh, Dr. Carsten said, the reward, there was a reward. So patients, I mean, it was no longer ostracized. People were encouraged to report adverse events. That by itself was a big thing. Collection and monitoring of data for several performances, objective measurement of quality of healthcare started happening. So this is just one data which I'll tell you, uh, and there are lots of references for that, that reduced uh, the, uh, the coming of NABH over the years, past 15 years, as uh, directly or indirectly led to uh, reduced, uh, it has led to reduced medication error by 78% increased revenue by 20% and I'm quoting from studies. So these are certain achievements over the years. I only want to highlight that we are the only accreditation board in the world to bring out a Ayush program to bring out some sense uh, in this traditional domain, which has lots of importance amongst other things. And in 2019, for the entry level certification, we created the HOPE portal. HOPE is an acronym standing for Hospital Online Accreditation Platform for Entry Level Certification, which today is very proud to uh, have more than 7,600 hospitals on that. So very easy, very simple. So step by step, NABH is helping create an idea about quality. So that's a small step towards creating an ecosystem of quality. All our standards are free. Anybody can f visit our website www.nabh.co and download any standard for browsing. They're all free of charge. There are lots of materials. Uh, during COVID, we seamlessly transferred not one, two, hundred. We drafted 245 policies uh, for every aspect of virtual assessment and we carried out seamlessly so that our partner hospitals do not lose uh, accreditation or certification during this very, very turbulent period. Uh, so desktop assessment, virtual assessment, hybrid assessment, they all are carrying on. We did lots of training. We have a YouTube channel which is streaming, lots of good webinars. They're all there on the YouTube. You can access Code Blue and variety of seminars and all these have received thousands of it, in tens of thousands actually. So you can visit Code Blue, etc. We have a newsletter which we intend to. The next newsletter will be brought out in association with ASPA. So, so that will be a very prominent feature. Lots of feature, patient safety day, etc. And we are very keen to take forward certain new initiatives. We are drafting new standards for FOXI under the Manita scheme, which will bring together the Government of India's Laksha initiative into one standard. For IADVL, the dermatology clinics we'll bring out. We are also working with Smile Train uh, to accredit all their centers, 250 of them. So lots of work is happening. And this is just one last point, that Aishman Bharat Digital Mission, our honorable prime minister has given a clarion call for one nation, one standard, and he formally released the uh, Aishman Bharat Digital Mission, which is a very, very pet uh, period uh, project of the government. Not only government, it's going to revolutionize the industry, the way we look at things at healthcare. So this is the big thing which is already happening and we are at the center of it. Uh, healthcare registry, health professional registry, uh, uniform ID. So all components of ABDM we are helping integrate. Uh, so digital health standard is another area which we, uh, which 
hopefully by the end of the uh, this month you will see a draft in public opinion so that also we are drafting with this thing so lots of emerging frontiers in healthcare digital health rise in outpatient care mobile treatment so all of these things we are very keen to take forward and now we keen are very keen to focus on creating awareness with the partners like kaho and take quality to the last man in the line so lots of trainings you can expect low cost free of charge etc and nationwide quality movement we are very keen to take forward so one thing we must realize that nabh is a sterling example of truly atmanirbhar home grown standards drafted by the people implemented by the people so we must take proud so nabh today stands tall on the support of you on your soldiers so that is the pledge we need to take that let's strengthen these standards and take quality to the last man in the line thank you so much